It is 4.20 a.m. and many in the national capital are still in bed. But eight-year-old Jeremiah Arthur and his mother, Betty Mensah, are already here at the 37 military hospital. On this day, they would not see a doctor until after 8 a.m., about four hours from now. Jerry and his mother left Sakrade at midnight by bus. This means it will take them at least eight hours from the time they left home to when they will finally see a doctor. Anytime they have to come to the hospital, they travel at night in order to be in the right position of the long queue of patients. There is no sleep for them on such occasions. The reason Jerry is still sleeping on the wooden bench in front of the surgical OPD. After securing her place in the queue, Jerry's mother heads for the X-ray laboratory. She must do this before daylight brings with it another long queue that will delay their turn to see a medical doctor. Previous experiences have taught her that an X-ray is a predictable ritual of Jerry's medical review. Jerry and his mother came to the hospital with only what they wore because they thought they would be done by midday and returned to Takradi. But the doctors decided otherwise. Jerry would have to undergo another surgery, which is scheduled for the following day, Friday, January 5th, 2018. He is admitted to the Nkrumah ward, a ward he is very familiar with. They say you go for surgery. How do you feel about that? Nothing. You don't feel anything about the surgery? Mm. Yeah. doctor no plan Jerry has lost his left leg. The crude amputation took almost all his thigh. The surgery was to be performed on the remaining leg, which can be described as a half leg. All the toes except the big toe are missing. The part of the remaining leg between the knee and the foot looks like a PVC pipe caught midway by fire and salvaged just in time before that portion melts completely. Apart from the scars below his knee and on his thigh, the bones in this remaining leg are fractured, a reason Jerry was to undergo the surgery. That surgery did not happen the following day as promised due to the shortage of oxygen. It was rescheduled to the following Friday and Jerry would have to spend another week after that before being discharged. A Ghana Air Force plane was flying from Accra to Takradi on the day Jerry was discharged, so the Garrison Education Unit arranged to have them on board. Jeremiah Arthur and his family were hit by a crude disruption to their lives on June 2, 2016, when a 62-year-old woman entered Jerry's school compound in Takrade with a Toyota Corolla and crushed the six-year-old boy against a wall. A Toyota saloon car came from this direction. Okay. Excuse me. And that's actually a slope. Yes, yeah. this direction. Okay. She actually, the driver was a woman. She actually got her way all right. Okay. Came and joined the main route. Okay. You let me let me show you here. Is the main road. This is the main road okay. that is leading to Beach Road Township. Okay. So she got here, turn right. This way. This way. Okay. She got her turning all right. Okay. Then few meters. Few meters precisely here. Okay. What happened? What happened? She veered off again. Okay. Turning 90 degrees this way and jump over this big gutter. Big gutter. But then this fence wall wasn't there. Okay. She jumped off this gutter and climbed onto the platform. Okay. Let me show you what happened exactly. The set Jeremiah Atta mm -hmm. who got here, there okay. was one course on this. Okay. That's Jeremiah Atta, yes, Jeremiah Atta got here and one foot in, one foot was still hanging and the car hit the hanging foot against the wall. 
the car hit the hanging leg against the wall and I suspect the woman was stepping on accelerator thinking it was brick so there was more pressure eventually it cannot push this very wall Whoa. so the leg was still in between the wall and the car until the leg auto chopped off Well, so we have a full live documentary uh, airing on Joy News, but of course we have the producer of the documentary here, our own Manasseh Azuria Wene, the investigative journalist, one-time journalist of the year. And uh, good morning to you, Manasseh. Very tragic, no, very sad story. Um, very. The, the gentleman uh, in the position that he, f he finds himself will, will be a worry to everybody, not only the family, but I'm sure even the the person who may have caused this ultimately um but that's the state in which he finds himself yes. um what actions were taken to get him to where we even find all the pictures that we we, we see now well roland from the people i have spoken to all of them make allusions to the fact that but for the intervention of the ghana armed forces this boy would have died because when it happened they took him to Ifyam Kwanta Regional Hospital in Takrade was losing a lot of blood and per what they tell me the attention given to him was really not enough so he was brought to the 37 military hospital that arrangement for the referral was done by the military and they ensured that he got uh, special care the surgeon who took care of him at 37 I'm told even volunteered to personally dress his wounds and he got better, spent some months at home. He spent close to a year out of school before uh, having to go back to school. And what happened is that they had to take him from the school. This accident happened for a number of reasons. One, the trauma. Mm. Two, the headmistress there had been transferred to another school. Uh, the most important point was that this school we are seeing, there's no, well, uh, there's no way a wheelchair can move from uh, any point to the classroom. If you look at how the school is, so that is disability, it's not disability friendly. And even a new school he is, it is only one classroom that is accessible by a wheelchair. And they even had to construct a special ramp to ensure that that happens. So this is what he's gone through, but I can also say the treatment is not yet done. Okay. The so so, so what's, what's supposed to be done now? What, what, are, what should we look forward to? And where will the assistance come from in terms of the b paying the bills and then the recovery processes that need to be done for you? Well, the 37 military hospital and the Ghana Armed Forces helped in the initial treatment, but a lot is still ongoing. There's even no uh, closure to uh, one of the legs, the remaining one. He's still undergoing surgeries. They are trying to also explore ways of at least getting him a prosthetic leg or for some, the other, the, other. the one that served. Yes. So a lot is still happening. As for the help, I spoke to the father, and he actually said this has placed a lot of financial burden on him. He used to have a two Evan buses and a taxi. He sold uh, the taxi, the Evan bus, and one is even broken down. He's had to take a, a lot of loans to support. The mother used to sell food at the at the senior high school to support the upkeep of the family. But as we speak now, she's had to leave her job to take care of him because some uh, this accident has brought about some trauma that a boy cannot stay alone, even if they are in the yeah, bedroom general. and then he's mm. in the hall. He begins to cry because. That fear is still over him, so somebody has to always be with him, and that's the mother. Is he an only child? No, he's uh, one of four children. Okay, but but ultimately, um, do they want some some funds to be raised publicly for him, uh, or what sort of assistance do they need? Because uh, you are telling us that the 37 military hospital is willing to do that. No, I'm talking of what has already happened, okay, some okay. part so of the going treatment forward. going forward. I'm not sure they would object to the raising of any funds because they, they are still struggling to get the insurance company to respond. But uh, it seems that process is also very slow. Which company was that? Uh, for um, certain reasons, I wouldn't want to put the name of the company out there because we've not actually engaged them to find out about that side. 
but I am aware the lawyers have filed a case in court mm. and it is going to uh, take some time to yeah, have that an, an, an eight-year-old boy and, and now he has to look forward to it, to, to life with a disability, so to speak. And the way the structure of our society is and the stigma usually also attached, um, how are they coping outside the home and the care of uh, the individuals that are known to him? Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking to him, he says his friends react to him or relate to him very well. And uh, Ghana Armed Forces also did a lot to ensure that he's uh, comfortable in the school. But that is even to some extent because he does not, he's not able to access the toilet. So now if he has to visit the toilet, a teacher has to lift him and take him there. I'm just imagining when he gets a bit older and he cannot be lifted. And as we know, the wheelchair cannot even move to certain parts of the school. The classroom he is now is the only one that is accessible. And the decision is that as long as he remains in that school, mm -hmm. he is going to use that classroom. So if he's going to class four, then they would transfer the class four to his classroom where he is now. But that is even to some extent. now. He has to always go to school in a taxi and come back in a taxi. And as a normal family that is struggling to make ends meet, these are all difficulties they have to confront. And mm -hmm. it is not easy for the family. Okay, so uh, no, knowing that, uh, we know this is going to air when? Uh, it's already started airing mm -hmm. on the TV. Uh, the radio one would air tomorrow okay. on the Super Morning Show. On the AM show, can, can we decide to do maybe some past, maybe you can get back to the family, let's know what they need so that we can raise some funding through the benevolence of our viewers and let's see where we can go with, with the forward treatment of, of this young boy. Well, I am very sure they would welcome any form of support, especially financial support, mm -hmm. because this prosthetic leg they are trying to get and uh, get a closure on the other remaining leg. It's all money, his fees, his transportation. Every day they have to pay a taxi. Yeah. So yeah. speaking to them, they are really going through a lot. And okay. I'm so sure let's they know what it is. Then we can tell the viewers, uh, just for accountability purposes, we okay. know that this is what we're raising for the meantime, for his welfare and et cetera. But that's, that's a great uh, humanitarian work you're doing. Thank we you all want much. to impact society and see what we can give back to people who need it. But thank you very much. Manasi Azuria Wene, uh, our lead investigative journalist here at Joy News, and also a former GJ Journalist of the Year. He's a big man. Yeah, sometimes it gets under your skin, but it's normal. That's part of the work. But uh, we have to move on. Uh, we have to bring you the, the, the great side of entertainment on the show, uh, on the segment AM show. This is brought to you by Wake Purified Water. This is a thing that the producers of Awake do. And um, when you buy Awake Purified Water, there's a, there's a certain quantum of that money uh, that is set aside to do charity, that is uh, to support anybody that needs help in our society. So please make sure that uh, you patronize our purified water. Entertainment is next on AM Base.